YouTube. What's up? It's your boy Penny LS1 checking in once again. Y'all asked for it. I'm about to give it to you hard and direct. So rear brake, rear disc brake conversion, S10 Blazer to G body platform. I got the passenger side already done. So I'm gonna show you how it looks, what you need to do, and then I'm actually gonna do it live on the well, I say passion your passion. I'm gonna do it live on the driver's side and show you how to do it. But I did figure out where you need to cut, how to drill, all your holes, stuff like that. So first, let me show you all the parts that I picked up, and then we'll move to the back of the car, and I'll show you what it looked like, and then I'll bolt the back and plate on so you can see it. All right. So I went to the pick and pull, snatched the rear disc brakes off of a S10 Blazer. I believe the model is '98 through 2004, two wheel drive will work so i grabbed the whole back and plate i got i had to actually have the calibers bought those sometime last year so all i needed was the back and plate to make this work i've been looking for this i've been trying to avoid going to the yard for some reason gm still manufactures the i believe the driver side you can buy you can buy this piece right here brand new the driver side one but you can't get the passenger side one for whatever reason it's been discontinued so they're only like 70 bucks brand new, but you can't get a matching set. So went to the junkyard, shout out to uh, Willie Rebuilds. He pointed that out to me. He said, hey man, pick and pull. They got a bunch of them. So I pulled up their website actually, and you can check their inventory. And they had, we got three locations out here in Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, one in Fort Worth and two in Dallas. So they had like six of them in Fort Worth and Dallas has two locations. They had like eight and at one location and like six or seven at the other. So I just made that trip. Took my tool bag and we made it happen. So that's the back and play that you need to make this work. The caliber will bolt right up to that. When you go pull these, get all the nuts and bolts. Get the caliber bracket bolts. This is what's going to mount the caliber to the to the hub. I mean the yeah to the hub spindle whatever they call this. These bolts just when you get this whole bracket. I mean this caliber. Make sure you get these bolts and this abutment bracket. You're going to need that. And then I'm probably going to get new shoes for the actual parking brake itself so and then the boats that come out of here make sure you grab those because i actually almost didn't get those and these because i already had the caliber i wasn't even thinking about these boats until the last minute so i'm glad i grabbed those i mean these are just m10 boats you can get at the hardware store but you might as well grab them while you're out there so the parts that i'm gonna replace i bought new rotors got new pads and i'm gonna replace this little this rubber boot right here, see it's torn up. There's a dormant part for that. So that'll get replaced. And like I said, I'm thinking about buying new uh, shoes as well. So here's that piece right here. So we'll do that once I get everything finalized. Got your hardware kit for your pads. I did go ahead and get new studs. These are the ARPs. These are the same ones I have on the front. The part number 100-7708. They're two and a half inches long and they're the GM 12 millimeter by 1.5. The neural, it doesn't say on here, but it's a 5.09, I believe is what it said on the site. So that's the size for the, for this, uh, for the, what do you call it? The axles in the rear and same size for the, uh, for the, um, the, the hub on the front or the uh, bearing, the wheel bearing. These AC, AC Delco parts, this is the emergency brake or the parking brake cable. I'm going to try to get that to work. That's not going to be in this video today. But I bought brand new cables in the rear section for the blazer. From what I'm seeing, the only part of this is, that's different is the part that hooks on to this right here. The blazer one has a hook. The Monte Carlo one has that little, matter of fact, here it is right here. The Monte Carlo has this. And then the blazer one, I got, a, I got one right here. Here it is, right here. Right, here we go. The blazer one has this little hook like this. The hooks on this right here so it goes through here and then it hooks onto there and that's what gives you the if i can get it on there but you see how i go so it go on there like this and then when you pull the brake it'll pull that up and then actuate the shoes so that's the only part that's different some guys saying you can just weld this onto the monte carlo one but i went ahead and bought a new one so we'll figure that out later and if i get it to work i will show you guys so let me go ahead and put this back and plate on, then we'll jump over to the car. Well, before we jump over there, let me let me show you what I did first. Hold on. 
All right, so you can see I already had cut the ears off of the axle flange. I used a, uh, I just used a cutoff wheel on my grinder. I was gonna use a uh, reciprocating saw, sawzall, skill saw, whatever you, whatever brand, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Marvin, I appreciate you, Marvo. I didn't end up using that. I went ahead and just used the cutoff wheel. This is the piece right here that I cut off. So what I, what I ended up noticing is my first cut was this piece right here. I cut this top piece off just like that. And then once I got that off, I still needed to shave a little bit more to get the back and plate to go in there. So I ended up cutting these two pieces off. So when I do it on the other side, I'll show you, I'm going to make one cut and I'm just going to cut right here and right here. So I'll show you what it looks like. There's actually a, a mark on this and you'll see it and you can just cut right below that line. So no, no harm, no foul. Just make sure you have your, your guard on here to deflect the sparks. That was the reason I was going to use the, the Sawzall instead because I was worried about these sparks with all this flammable liquid I got over here. I got brake clean, PB blast, the gas tank is right there. So I was a little paranoid, but I got it to, I, actually I couldn't find that guard. That's why I had borrowed the Sawzall. But I was able to find that. So the hardest part, let me tell you, for me, the hardest part was getting the drums off, the old drums. You see how crusty the the, the, the part the drum shoes are and the backing plate? Well, inside of here, I mean, there's a lot of rust in there. And then the caked up rust on this part right here, it was almost like it was seized. I sprayed it down the night before. And I still had to use a hammer and a pry bar, if you will. I didn't have a pry bar, but I used like a big flathead screwdriver. And it took me, it took me forever to get that off. So if you plan on doing this, if you have not done a brake job on the rear, if you haven't touched these drums, they probably have never been touched. Go ahead and soak it down with some PB blast and just be ready to pry, 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 hammer, hammer, hammer. Once you get that off, the rest is just straightforward cutting and uh, drilling. The other thing that I had a hard time getting off was this this big boat right here. This big boat goes through this hole right here. And the front side is this. So this piece right here was like right here. And the, the boat was on the back side. I got it that far and couldn't get it out. So I ended up just taking the wheel to it and cutting it. Because once I got it loose like that, it was able to move in and out. And I got just enough room pulling it out to get my hack my uh blade on there to cut it off so keep that in mind if you can't get that boat off and i haven't done the other side so i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about that's why i left that on so if you can't get that out by wrenching it and i, I had to use a breaker bar too because it was that tight even the part that i did get un, uh loosened up i used uh the breaker bar that breaker bar right there <laughs> the one i keep in the car for my for my wheels so but i just wanted to show you all that and then I'm going to put the back of plate on so you can see how it looks. And one other thing, see that right there? If you have coilovers, most coilovers come with, what that bracket at? Let me grab the other bracket. Most coilovers, at least in my case, these are QA1s, came with this bracket that mounted right there. And the coilover mounted literally right there. The caliber will hit the spring. So you have to, you have to get a relocation bracket if you want to fab one up. They have many companies that produce these i think uh all in american has one umi i got this one i got it i got all these parts I actually ordered from jigs but this is a bmr part so it moves it over nice only thing i have a it's not touching but because of that three inch exhaust is literally i don't know an eighth of an inch you can get a piece of paper through there so hopefully that won't be an issue because i really don't want to do anything with my exhaust so let me put this plate on here i'll put the caliber on I'll go ahead and throw the, uh, I think I'm good to go. I can go ahead and slide the axle back in. I did put the studs in yesterday. Like I said, I did everything on this side I did yesterday, just so I can give you guys an overview. I'm going to show you what it looks like here in a second, and then I'm going to take you on the driver's side, and I'm actually going to show you the process. I'm going to cut. I'm going to drill. Oh, speaking of drill, the bottom holes are already in place. However, they are too small. So you will have to drill out the bottom hose, and then you will have to actually drill the top hose. The final size on that, which I don't think anybody had mentioned it, at least unless if they did, I missed it. The final size is this big boy right here. This is a, what was it, 11 32nd? 
13, 1332. I don't even see if I can get it to focus, probably not. But it's a 1332 is the actual size on that. Let me see. You can barely see it, but it's pretty big. So I started with a 3 8 to drill out the, the bottom hole. I think this is a 3 8. It might be a 5 16. Let me see. No, this is a 5 16. So I used a 5 16 to drill out the bottom hole first, and then I stepped up to that other one. And then when I did the top, I actually bolted the plate on there, snugged it up at the bottom, get it aligned as good as you can, because you see how close these are to the edge. So get it aligned. You'll be able to see the edge of this when you put the plate on there. So try to get it centered as you can to where you don't see any of this flange. That way, when you drill, you know you won't be on the, you know, over the edge. It's close as hell, but it ain't, it ain't there. So let me get this back and plate on here, and uh, we'll show you what it looks like. All right, so that's what it's gonna look like when it's finished. Not bad. Got the axle back in. I put the C clip in and pulled the axle out. I haven't put the uh, the pin back in that little the little bar yet because I'm finna go on the other side. So so I just want to give y'all an overview of what it looks like. Now let me get everything set up on the other on the other side. We'll go ahead and pull off that backing plate, cut that bolt because I already tried to get it out. I'll show you. Cut the bolt and then we'll go ahead and get started on cutting this flange. So y'all wasn't even gonna say nothing. Huh? I put the wrong rotor. That's the that's the driver side rotor. So let me swap that out. And then we'll go on the other side. Okay, now you can see a little bit better of what I was talking about <clears throat> as far as getting uh, that drum hat off. You see all this right here? Yeah, that stuff was caked up. So I had a hard time prying that off. I thought the, the brake was stuck, uh, engaged, but it wasn't. Well, it didn't look like it was. But And also what I was trying to figure out is if this cylinder is bad because when I was bleeding the brakes... I couldn't get any fluid to come out of the bleeder valve on this wheel. So I'm going to have to check that out. And I'll do that when I cut because I'm a, probably going to have to cut this line because I tried to take the other one off with the with the wrench. And it, it's, it's seized up. And I sprayed it with PB Blast a couple days ago. Excuse me. A couple days ago and let it soak. So I cut the line. Fluid should come out. If not, it's probably going to be an issue with the T over there or something but we'll figure that out because i'm gonna have to fab up some custom lines to run to the calibers anyway so i'm gonna try to get this boat out right here this big boat right here i'm gonna have to use my breaker bar i'm gonna probably get it a good three or four maybe 10 turns is what i got on the other one what i did was first i'm gonna take off all the well i'm gonna pull the axe out first and then i'm gonna take all these springs out so then I can get my vice grips on the flat side of this little deal right there. And then I can uh, go to work on that back boat. So I'm going to do that off camera. I'll cut you back on once I get to the part where I'm going to have to actually cut this with the uh, cutoff wheel on the grinder. All right, so I'll cut you back on in a minute. All right, I can't even get the sun bitch to turn. I think I stripped the, the nut already. Yeah, you can see it. So... I'm just gonna go ahead and take this cutoff wheel, get as close as I can, try to cut this off. Like I said, I don't need none of this stuff anyway. But see, I got my, I got the guard facing that way, so the sparks will fly back this way. Obviously, the gas tank is over there, so we don't want no issues with that. So let me just go ahead and get this cut off, try to get some progress, and then I cut y'all back on once I get this dust dust shield off or back and plate, whatever you call this. I'm gonna stick a stick a, a rag in here so that I don't mess up the I'm gonna put new bearings and um, seals on these axles once I get finished with everything but that way no metal goes up in there Uh, I can 
soldered the damn thing to the. <laughs> yeah, that boat is solid on there. Let me get this uh, E cable off. Parking cable. Parking cable, removal tool. You can use a 13 millimeter socket or 13 millimeter box wrench. But, get that out the way. This should get them on there. There we go. That was just the brake line. Okay, that was a challenge. That was definitely harder than the other side. So, see what I'm talking about. I think I didn't welded the damn stud to the piece that I need to cut off, but I got the back and plate off. That's the most important. So, what I did last time, I cut across here, and then I still needed more trimming to get the back and plate to fit. So, my second cut, I cut right around, see that little half moon or whatever right here and right here, a quarter moon. I cut on that edge and the plate fits right on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that on my first cut. Cut right here, cut right here, and then I'll put my flap disc on and bevel, get all the edges off. Yeah, this thing here is not coming off at all. So let me cut that off and then we can we can start drilling the hose out. Use a plug-in grinder if you got, if you can. I don't have one, and I'm just using this cheap Walmart grinder. Let me grab another battery real quick. That should work. I'm going to bevel this off with the flat disc. Hold on.
shoot, boy, that took more than I needed it to take. But you can see, got a nice, see how it look? That's exactly how you need it. Let me go get the plate just to double check real quick. Make sure it clears. And then I'll start drilling out the hose. We should be good though. And I was gonna show y'all something on this uh this cable right here. Yep. I bought a tool, the brake cable, release tool. But I found out and I saw a video. This is gonna actually use a closed end wrench. 13 millimeter. We'll slide over here and get that off. The tool is basically the same. It's just got two different sizes. So this size right here fits over there. Because what it's doing is, let me show you, it's pushing those clips in. If you see those clips, it pushes all of those in at the same time so that you can pull the cable out. So that's what that's for. So let me do a test fit and see. Put you back on the tripod. See if I need to trim any more. I think I should be good though. Because you can see from the factory how the blazer hub is or the blazer axle. So let's see. Bingo. Let me see. Yep. First try. So use that. Use that as a template. Just cut on those, those lines that curve down right there. Like I showed you before I started cutting. Just cut there. You won't have to do any more trimming. So now what we got to do is drill out these holes. So what I do, or what I did on the other side, I trimmed out the bottom holes first. And then, let me see, can you see it? Yeah, I trimmed out the bottom holes first, mounted the plate on there, and then just used the plate as a guide to, to do the, the top two. So I'm going to start with a, I believe this was a 516. Damn, did I put this on the charger? Shit, hold on, I don't think I put my drill on the charger. Okay, I did have it on the charger. So I'm going to start with a, I believe this is a 516. Let me see, I can't, my eyesight getting horrible. Yeah, 5, is that it right there? Yeah, 516. Yep, so start, I'm going to start with a 516 bit on the bottom. I'm going to use some uh, assembly lube as, as some uh, lube, and then also I'm going to I got my PB blaster spray just to keep it lubricated so the beat the, the bit doesn't overheat and uh you know so we'll put this back in here and we'll start on that side right there. So let me see. I don't know if I want to zoom me in. Nah, you can see it. So we'll start there. And I'm just using a cheap little black and decker drill. It works, but if you got something better, by all means, I was gonna buy some tools. I need to, I need to get a couple of more tools. I was gonna get, I started getting my Milwaukee stuff set up. So, but I didn't feel like spending the money just to uh, getting a drill just to do this project. This will work, but I do have a Milwaukee uh, shop light with the 18 volt battery. So I got that for what was it Father's Day or when they have the sales around Father's Day. Oh my God, was that? I had my face mask on while I was cutting. <laughs> now I'm just gonna wear my regular goggles. Or if I can find them. Safety glasses. Oh, here they go. Okay. And we're gonna get to drilling. Slow and steady. You'll see it start. You'll see the metal start chopping up. I think this is uh not sure what bit this is what brand anyway all right so now i'm just gonna spray it as i go a lot 
light pressure pushing in. But you see it cutting. Put some lube on it. See it smoking. Looks like it's getting hot. When they grab, be careful. Make sure you have two hands on the drill because when they grab, when they get almost, when it's about to punch out the other side, that the whole drill is going to go like this. It's going to catch it hard. Let me make sure I'm not on time lapse. Hold on. Okay, we good. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't on time lapse since I'm here talking. I'm going to punch this one out. And then I'll, put, I'll cut you back on when I start the top two. After I get this one, after I get this one to the full size, we're almost there. I feel the, I can feel the, the point of the bit coming out. I think, yep, almost. Keep two hands on it at all times. Trust me. Even though this just drill like that strong, the your wrist, it'll jack your wrist up. See how, see how it's snatching? That's what I was talking about. But this bit keeps spinning inside of the drill. All right, we're about to punch through. It does take a while. Just have some good drill bits and maybe have, have a, a few of them. Because I only got one for each size that I'm drilling. So we should be punching out here in a minute. Definitely feel it. Tip on the back side. See how it's, see that how it's catching? That's how you know you. <laughs> so try to bag it out, and then go. Well, the bit keeps. But reverse it before you push it all the way through, so you don't jack your arm up. <clears throat> Come on, baby. I mean, a good drill would help too, but come on. <laughs> Don't worry, we're going to get it. I did it already, so. Get it together, Penny. Let's go. There we go. We threw it through. So that's 516. I'll probably step up to the 3 8 before I hit it with the big one. This 3 8 that I have, it's a. It's a I think this is carbide. But it cuts quicker. But let's try this one. Step it up one more size before we go to the final. This one ain't that. See that? Yeah, this one cuts better than that gold one. Ooh, my glove hot. Only thing, this drill bit is round on the chuck side. It ain't got a flat spot. So it's, it's not spinning. We almost home. We almost home. Come on. Oh, there we go. All right, so three eighths. So five sixteenths first pass, three eighths. And then this is the big boy right here. It is a 12. I can't read, but my eyesight is. Hold on. Let me get my light. It's a 13, excuse me, 1330 seconds. This is a DeWalt brand bit. It cuts pretty good. It was $9 at Home Depot. They had some <laughs> better ones, but they had one for like 17 bucks. I think it was a Milwaukee or a uh, um, Diablo or whatever it's called. So this is the final side. Matter of fact, let me get the boat for you real quick so I can show you. So here's the boat. See how it goes in, but it doesn't go all the way through. I thought it was a 3 8 hole, but I was like, oh man. Because I didn't think I was going to have enough room. But I, you got just enough more meat on this flange for this last size without, you know, causing a problem. 
So I'm gonna do this last one for y'all live, and then I'm gonna drill the second one off off camera, and then I'll come back and we'll start the top two. So this one should go pretty quick. All right, y'all, we back. So I did. I had to let the drill charge up, so I went ahead and punched that one through. Once you get the three eighths, then it's it's only gonna take a quick little hit. Of the of the final 13 30 what does i say 13 30 seconds and it's gonna it's gonna go right through but the the drill was was pretty much low so but like i said i'm gonna go ahead and drill this other side off camera i'll cut you back on once i mount the plate on there and start the top two holes all right so i got both bottom holes drilled i actually had to run and pick up a a new 5 16 drill bit so make sure you got a good bit or like i said maybe have a couple of them so I'm going to go ahead and put the backing plate on. And I'm going to try to show you what I was talking about as far as trying to center this up as best you can before you start drilling the top holes. <clears throat> so let me get this bottom, bottom two bolts. And then I'll bring the camera down here and show you, or try to show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. So we'll get, we'll get that in there. We're just going to loosely put the, I'm missing one, one boat, one, two, three, where's, oh, it's right here. Never mind, I got it, okay. So like, so I'm just gonna loosely put this on here. And then I'll show you. And bolts. I can't see. <clears throat> oh, it's right here on the corner of her bracket. Let me get this boat on here. My bag if I'm blocking the camera. Okay. So let me bring you down here real quick and show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So you see how you can see the light? coming through the top hole that's the edge of the hold on that's drop my light that's the edge of the whatchamacallit oh you can't see it now let me put it back up here see the light that's the edge of the actual flange so what i did is see how you move it over see the edge you want to make sure when you drill that hole you want it over as far as you can get it it's still going to be close but you don't want to see no light through there. And then the same thing over here, you can kind of still see some light. So just take my word for it. Just try to get it lined up before you tighten these two bottom bolts. Get it as centered as you can so that you can drill those holes without going off the edge. Otherwise you're going to split the metal and then you won't get a tight, tight grip. So let me get this tightened up and then I'll show you. Okay, I think I got it. Got it as straight as I can get it. I don't see any light coming through either one of these holes. So I should be close enough from the edge to drill my holes. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to start with the 516. No, I'm going to start with the the big bit just so that I can do a basic create a center punch. And then I'll go, I'm going to drill the first hole with the 516 bit. But I'm going to use the, the, what is this bit again? 13, 30 second. I'm going to use that because it's the exact size of the hole. I'm going to use that just so that I can get a pilot hole started and it's going to center punch that hole with the tip of the bit. And then from there, my 516 bit will grab that, that, uh, that center punch and then push its way through. So, so let's do that. Okay. I'm probably hope I'm not blocking your view, but like I said, I'm just going to start with the, the big bit first, just so that I can get a center punch. Okay, I already see metal coming off. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing over here real quick, just so I can get that one out the way. Okay, 
I could drill all the way through with that, but it'd just be harder because it's such a big bit. So if you had a drill press, well, you couldn't put this in a press. So we're going to go with the 516. Like I said, this is a new bit. I just bought it this morning. So this is the next day in case y'all wondering. <laughs> so I stopped at Home Depot after I took my daughter to school, picked up the 516 uh, hard metal bit. It's a uh, Milwaukee brand. So let's see if we can get this pushed through. Let me see if I can get y'all closer. Hold on. A little closer. Let me see if this works. Goggles on, man. You see that metal flying? Oh, shit. Hold up. Forgot to put this tile in there. Thanks. This bit cutting, boy. Cutting good too. Ready to come out the back. Two hands on the drill. See? All right, so that's 516. Yeah, good drill bit, definitely for the win. We're going to step it up to the 3 8 Like so I'm using the plate as a guide because them hoses are close to the edge. I'll show you after I drill. I'm going to pull off the plate and show you how close this is to the edge. Hopefully ain't too close where to break. Three eighths. I should have got a three eighths bit. With the flat edge. Because this thing keeps spinning. The drill spinning on the bait. On the bit. There we go. So you can see how quick these drill these hoes. Three eighths. Now we're going to our finish size of 13 30 seconds. This bit is a monster. It's hard to get started too though. Let me see. Gotta get a rolling start. Get this bite right away. There we go. Come on, baby. go we through so follow those steps and you shouldn't have no problem as far as actually drilling the hole in the solid metal so let me drill this other one then i'll pull a plate off and show you how close we are to the edge hopefully we're not too close all right well here comes the moment of truth i got the top hose drilled out i don't remember cutting this much metal on the other side I mean, the, the shavings weren't like this. I guess I had a different type of bit. But take this plate off so I can see how close I am to the edge. Hopefully we're not <laughs> too close. Moment of truth. Uh, someone told me to just get a 4 9 inch instead of dealing with this. But I thought about, well, I don't know if I was ever thinking about getting a 4 9 inch. But I did look at getting like a Grand National rear end. 
or something like that. But either way, I was gonna have to do this conversion unless I found one. I mean, I, think, I know there's companies out there that make make them already. But uh, this good man, like I say, I ain't got, I ain't got, I ain't got power to, to, to need a four nine inch. Like like Mr. Gooden there said, a lot of y'all got four nine inches, can't even turn the mother sucker. <laughs> I thought that was funny when I heard him say that, cause that's just that's just what most people do, four nine inches. But this ain't gonna be a drag car. It's just gonna be a street ride. So the only thing I'm gonna do to this rear end is put put a posi or two tra yeah two track posi so I can do so I won't be one one leg. Woo, we close. We close, but I think we I think we're still in a safe zone. This side over here. Woo woo. Yeah, this side is super close. Let me bring you in and see what I'm talking about. Yeah, that side there, closer than a sucker, boy. You see that? See how thin that is? I tried to get it. See, this side got a little bit more meat. I was trying to get them even. But it should be all right, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I had the plate kind of cocked a little bit. But, well, we're going to roll with it. So I'm going to get my brake clean, clean all this up. I'm going to bolt the bracket on. And then I'm going to go ahead and change out that control arm bracket. I, I don't need to show you how to do that. If you've installed coilovers on your car... You know how to do it. All you got to do is just take this one off, put the new one on. And it's just this one bolt right here. That's the lower trailing arm bolt. You got to take that out. Obviously, remove this. But what I ended up having to do because, well, maybe not on this side because my exhaust ain't in the way. But I, t I went ahead and took the whole control um, coilover out of the car because I couldn't get it to move over with the, I think it was hitting the exhaust. Yeah, it was on the other side. So let me do that. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and put the plate on. I'll bring you back on after I put the bracket, the bottom bracket on, and then I, when I put the caliber on, I'll show y'all that. All right, so we got the bracket on for the coilover. So we got that situated out the way. I wiped this down. So go ahead and finish this up for y'all. I ran into a little problem. I posted a, if you guys follow me on Instagram at PennyLS1, I posted a quick little story. My axle, something's wrong or different with the axle on this side. Shout out to 87SS boy for letting me know to just, I'll show you what he mentioned. He said a lot of people, well, he said he knew, or he heard that people were having this, this issue. I didn't run across it, so I didn't know prior to me doing it. But my axle, I don't know if it's the, it's the hub centric part of the axle. The other side went on perfect. This side doesn't go on flush. When I say flush, I'm talking about the rotor on the uh, hub centric on the uh, on the axle so let me bolt this up and then I'll show you what I'm talking about put the axle in and then I'll uh, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about all right <clears throat> so I don't have the studs on yet but this is what I'm talking about right here this rotor let me get you closer it's supposed to slide all the way on that hub centric ring right there But you see how it's up against it right here? And it's got a gap right here that when I try to put the put the caliber bracket on, it's the the rotor is too far out for it to line up with the hose. So I don't know what's going on with this axle. And now I know why I had a hard time getting the uh the drums off because it was tight even on the drum that came off of here. The only reason it, I was able to actually put the drum back on just to see the metal is thinner around this part on the drum. So it slid on with, with some force. So what I'm going to do, um, like I say, shout out to 87 SS boy. He said he heard that people had to ring out the rotor from the inside. I mean, it's probably a, not even a millimeter off. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do it with my uh, carbide bit on my I got a straight angle or straight die grinder. And I'm going to just hit it real quick and see if I can get the slide on there. That's the last piece to the puzzle. And then I'll go ahead and press in the uh, ARP studs. If y'all want to see that, I'll, uh, I'll, put a, I'll put that in here showing how I press those in. But let me get this rimmed out real quick and see if I can get just enough material so this will slide on this axle. Because like I say, the other one went on fine. So the axles are different or something's wrong with this axle to where it's not, not working. So let me do that and I'll cut you back on. Well, that worked. 
as you can see it's on there flush so what i used was carbide bit on a straight angle air die grinder and i just basically just set the rotor on the ground i just went around like this a couple times checked it almost was on there went back again and it slid right on so shout out to 87 ss boy for that too because I, I like I, said, I didn't even know that was an issue so now you see it comes on and off with one hand now easy so so let me pull the axle back out i'm gonna i'm gonna press these studs and i'm gonna show y'all what i how i what i use to put these studs in we'll wrap this video up man i know it's, it's long but i want to make it as detailed as possible for those that haven't done this yet and that have been contemplating doing it like myself so let me put these studs in then we'll go ahead and put the caliber back on and we'll wrap it up all right so this is the tool i'm gonna use to uh press the studs in it's got a ball bearing in there that spins it's this part right here 22800 um i can never pronounce that but that's the same company that i got that brake caliper i mean a brake line removal tool so basically let me see I'll try to set you up on a tripod and show you so you basically just take your stud get my impact here take your axle can y'all see that okay so put your stud in from the bottom or from the back side you put this on all right my bad the camera overheated so where are we at i was saying put this uh make sure you can see it make sure you put the tool with the the well obviously it's only one way we can go the flat side goes down and that way the the load nut can sit flush in there just hand tighten it so it gets snug and you want to just make sure the the stud is straight so they don't go in there cockeyed and then just go with it let me see if i'm gonna tilt it see if i can get you a good angle maybe not we'll zoom in if i can Let's see. Pretty much it. So let me get all these pressed in, and then we'll go back over there and we'll finish up. All right, I didn't realize. Hold on. All right, I didn't realize that was on time lapse, but we got got the caliber bracket. Caliber is on everything buttoned up so what i'm getting ready to do now i'm gonna take the calibers and the caliber bracket i'm gonna paint those red i will work on getting the parking brake to work so once i figure that out I'll, I'll film that so you guys can see that if you're interested in that and also i have to go and get a brake line um, cutter and flare too so i can make the line shorter i'm gonna probably make it to about right here and then run it soft line to the caliber so we'll get that done something else i want to show you real quick before we wrap this up with that bracket with that uh coil over relocation bracket the mount is about two inches lower so look i put the wheel on this side <laughs> see how high the car raised up so now i've got to go and um lower to bring bring the control the coil overs down a little bit on this side to get it back to how i had it so but you can see this brakes are on not bad so i've got the wheel chalked in the front since i got no parking brake and i got no brake brake so if you're new to the channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button click that notification bell so you get notified when i'm dropping a new video check me out on tiktok and instagram at penny ls1 and if you're a return viewer thank you for your support thank you all for your support and until next time penny ls1 holla at your boy Oh!